A long way to go. My lips were kissing the floor once more. My hand and feet were as brown as the mud on the floor beneath me. Every cell ached and a voice within me said, Fight till the end. As I struggled to get up, only to be thrown in the air for the umpteenth time. I accepted defeat. No matter how hard I tried I was unable to stand for more than five minutes before the sword lady. You need to work harder Emily. The sword lady's words were unable to make an impact on this numb brain of mine. I simply stood, my eyes found the ground more interesting. Those from the dragon realm were particularly happy. Apart from Fay and where none were concerned if I was bruised all over. It was times like these than any other when I wished I had a parent to talk to. While my grandmother, with her well-meaning intentions, always wanted me to become stronger. I felt cold all over. As I returned to the hospital for the seventh time this month, the nurses who were quite familiar with me, just let me in. You are back. I looked up to meet the playful doctor's eyes. He was one of those who knew my identity. As he sat down to change my dressing manually, I was surprised. You are not using magic. When I can avoid it, I do. In case of injuries like yours I usually apply the medicine with my own hands. Strange. What is so strange about it? In a world where everyone is relying on their magical abilities to succeed you are one of those who avoid using it when you can. Magic is important, but at times chanting a spell may not get you out of your trouble. A good sorcerer from any realm will have equally great sensory abilities as well. There you are done. I noticed his long fingers which had just applied the medicine. The medicine did not sting this time. Did you change it? Here take a look. Last time you were absent, one of your nurses applied it. It hurt a lot. It hurt because she only uses magic. No matter how much I try to explain these finer aspects about life to them, they fail to understand. You are speaking like an old man. I am old. I am as old as Jake or Vern King. Try telling this to them. They still think that they are quite young. The doctor had a rare smile on his face. So it means that even Vern King treats you differently. No, it's just that I am. I stopped myself from completing this sentence. Vern King and I were mates, but I did not feel like sharing this fact yet. Nothing about us was certain. Moreover, his engagement had already been announced. I had learnt that many royals across the supernatural dimension could have more than one wife. I did not want to be one of his wives. If we married then he'd have to remain faithful to me for the rest of our lives. If this arrangement could not work then, I would simply let him go. The doctor sensed my hesitation and did not probe further. Instead he spoke to me about our lesson. Did you do something to anger her that you have become the sword lady's favorite student? Trust me. I am anything but, favorite. You are being made to work harder than others. It is rare for us to see her personally involved with someone. I would be grateful if she did not take interest. Every time we spar I am hurt and I lose. I train harder than others and yet my scores are constantly the lowest. You have no idea how many times I have been on the verge of giving up. Each day I continue till my breaking point is breached. I really do not have an option. Either I pass out or I get up and start fighting again. If this continues I will be unable to perform well in my exams. He listened to me very carefully. It was good that I finally had a chance to speak about this matter to someone. Just letting it all out was cathartic. A knot within me had loosened and once I stopped I felt better. Have you finished or is there something more to say? The doctor handed me a glass of water which I gulped down in one go. Emily your anger will not help to heal your wounds faster. I. Don't interrupt. Let me finish. I just noticed that your mind is unstable. You are getting letting your emotions rule your mind. Just because you scored the highest in the test of fire you think as if you should win every time. There is nothing wrong about your desire to be at the top. However, your attitude may amplify your troubles in the future. 
the Sword Lady is the most powerful warrior of the supernatural dimension today. Your desire to defeat her is wishful thinking. Rather, you should concentrate on learning more. I was too stunned to speak a word. Was it the same doctor who was famous as a man of a few words in school? It took me some time to understand what he had said. As I took my leave and walked down towards the dining hall, the doctor's words still resonated in my ears. Instead of practicing, concentrating on improving your weakness you are walking with a bruised ego. Just remember, once your ego raises it so you lose any chance to improve. You are scared to fail. Since you think that you will fail, you naturally will. You have forgotten that the best masters in the world started from scratch. The ignorant has a greater chance to succeed as they do not try to tie everything down with terms of logic and intelligence. When someone points their flaws, they might be willing to work and improve. The smarter ones despite their potential are the problematic ones. Quite often they close themselves to suggestions and as such remain stagnant throughout their life. I had realized my problem. I looked down upon others and had allowed false pride to grow within me. It seemed as if the security of being backed by the honorable deity and having the vampire king and queen as my godparents had got into my head. Luckily it was not late to make amends. As I lay down to sleep, I was glad that I had another opportunity the next day. Having realized my faults I knew that tomorrow would be a new day in my life. I had understood a basic lesson which the sword lady had been trying to impart. I was not the best. I had to work harder to improve. It was a long journey and I had a long way to go. I only hope. The myriad shades of green and blue made a beautiful picture as the waves tossed up and down. When school closed, I was glad to receive a couple of days off so that I could go and meet the person, Alan whom my phoenix had successfully located. Two days, Emily. The phoenix will transport you to a secret island after your two days are over. You are very weak. Your training will officially begin. At school I was quite happy with my progress, despite being badly beaten by my seniors during lessons which the sword lady imparted each evening. This joy was short-lived as my grandmother thought that I was not strong enough. She wanted to speed up certain things when I had just made peace with myself for progressing slowly. This new development left me slightly confused. Were things not taken step by step even in the supernatural dimension? Or, was there really a way to accelerate? A way which was hidden for a chosen few? Unfortunately, I could not speak to anyone with respect to this matter. The Prince of the Dragon Realm, Vern King and Jake, the heir to the throne of the Vampire Realm, had already left for a mission. The arrogant final term student Silverhair, along with a few more final term students had also accompanied them. Almost a month since their departure had passed. I was at the bottom rung of the food chain in this dimension. As such, it was natural that any news about them had not reached my ears. Moreover, I could not demand information from those I knew. In that one month, I was able to give an above average performance in the surprise tests which were held. Lynn from the Dragon Realm topped. Where and Faye passed while many others failed. Fail one more test and some of you might pack your bags and leave forever. It is up to you all to decide whether you'd like to stay back for a better future or you'd like to become a slave in your respective realms. The sword lady's words always created a deeper impact than any other instructor's speech. The impact of her words was quite visible, as many who had been previously lazing around were often spotted in the library during their free time now. The coursework got harder as each day passed. There were nights when I would look out of my window and wonder whether this effort would ever yield any result. The previous I, in the mortal dimension, was undoubtedly very foolish. I used to think that I led a hard life then. I realized that a smooth sailing student life in the supernatural dimension was much harder. When I had complained to Avery about the same in a letter, she agreed and said, It is tough Emily. Those who pass out are custodians of some of the biggest secrets on this planet. It will be their responsibility to ensure a peaceful coexistence of beings across dimensions and realms. This will be possible only when the baton is passed down to the best. 
Becoming the best is a continuous process. We will never ever reach that threshold. Our past version of the best would always be the better version for our present selves. You will encounter more difficulties as you are not the one who had a choice. Ever since the day of your birth, you have been destined to shoulder more responsibilities. As such, when the holidays arrived everyone heaved a sigh of relief. Those in the first term were the only ones who were fortunate enough to get this break. All the other students, being seniors, were expected to slob more. As the three of us departed from the school gates, Ware rushed to his parents. The happiness of being free from the shackles of school was evident on his face. I hope that he remembers to finish his assignments, said Faye. Leave him Faye. Let's hope that he forgets. When he is punished, the two of us can enjoy a good show. True, smiled Faye. Shortly after that, Faye walked towards the enchantment circle drawn in front of the school gates. It was meant to transport fairies to their realm. As far as I was concerned, my phoenix appeared when all had left and I disappeared as soon as I touched her claw. When I opened my eyes, I was on an island where my grandmother stood waiting for me. I informed her that I had a school task to complete. Unhappily she yielded. As I set off with my pet bird, I knew that I had only 48 hours to seek justice for myself as well as the partanibler boy. It took my phoenix three hours to reach Alan's place and when I first saw him I was shocked. He seemed to be an ordinary human being who would not even cause heads to turn. Moreover, he was the grandfather who had once offered me sweets when I was in the school playground after being bullied by Lang and her gang at the age of seven. I rang the doorbell and a smiling man greeted me. I always knew that there was something special about you. Your phoenix alone has the ability to cross the magical obstacles which I have placed. Did you know who I was? Alan smiled. I made a guess. Despite being a rusty old fellow now, my guesses are quite accurate. Alan laughed again. Anyway, I felt that we had some connection. Moreover, I was never able to read your thoughts. Only those belonging to the solar realm have this ability. But, I was quite surprised as to what you were doing in the mortal dimension. Initially, I suspected that you were a trap. Was that the reason why I never met you after that day in the park? Yes. I was disappointed with myself when I found out that you were an orphan. However, when I tried to search for you, you had vanished without a trace. I wanted to thank you as you have saved the love of my life. Alan's wife entered and pulled me into a hug when she saw me. How are you child? I'm fine. Take a seat. What brings you here? I looked at Alan, who sat down next to his wife, waiting patiently to hear me out. I wondered how to approach a man who could single-handedly go against the most powerful person in the supernatural dimension. I wondered if he would agree to my request. After all, I was nobody. I knew that Alan would not interrupt. I knew that if I chose to remain silent I could leave without further ado. As I looked into the couple's eyes, I instinctively felt as if I had a slim chance of winning. The two of them trusted me. Their expressions revealed their faith. I looked at my hands. My fingers wound tightly into each other. I was sure that my ears had turned red as well. I looked up again. Alan's wife smiled. I decided to face my fear. Sir. Hmm. I. Go on Emily. Don't be scared of this old man. If he says something to you he can sleep in the living room for a month. Alan looked at his wife. Dear I. She is such a good child. Don't you dare try and intimidate her. No I'm not. Emily, I will get some hot chocolate for you. It will calm you, she said as she got up and left. You had better be nice to her. It was amusing to see him being bullied by a woman. It was just the two of us now and I finally gathered some courage. I need your help. There are two cases for which I am looking for a legal representative. The Queen of the Dragon Realm is involved in one of them, while some more powerful figures are the opposing party in the other case. Apart from you. 
there is no other lawyer who would not bow down to threats issued by them. As such, please represent me in these two legal battles. I had placed all my cards on the table. I did not know what his answer would be. But, he was my only hope and I would not leave before persuading him. Alive and well. Vern. The Anivler King upon his return may be stronger than before. I am afraid that it might not be easy to subdue him this time. His Holiness had always chosen his words carefully. Neither Jake nor I doubted him when he predicted the return of the Anivler King. According to him, the wheel has been set into motion and a peaceful supernatural dimension might be history if we are unable to stop him. If we do not begin now I am afraid it might be too late. Fire was always the predominant element within me. But, even if I were to pour all my energy into summoning the strongest flames that were dormant within me I knew I would fail. No matter what the temptation is, do not make this foolish mistake. The Anadler King will easily absorb your life's essence and use you as a tool to enslave the world. Your temper is your weakness. Learn to control it. The Anadler King. He had haunted my dreams sixteen years ago. Due to my senior's sacrifice he disappeared and his powers were broken. So it is quite disturbing that he had chosen this precise moment to try and resurrect. I wondered if it was a coincidence or whether. He too had an idea about Emily's existence. We have arrived. Jake's words brought me back to the present moment. We were standing before the entrance of the cave. An arch with tigers on either side as if in motion greeted us. Are these real? asked one of the final term boys who had accompanied us. Maybe, may not be, replied another. Are you sure that this is the place? Yes I think so. How can we confirm that it is real and not an illusion? I just saw a dancing nymph emerging from the waterfall behind. For some reason their voices irritated me. My eyes met Jake's. Like me too was unhappy with these kids. They were too soft and had grown up in peaceful days. They lacked discipline and I was determined to punish those who tried to impede our progress tonight. Enough said Jake. These are many traps and illusions. If you value your life you'd better shut your mouths up and do exactly what we ask you to. Follow us carefully and don't wander. If you are tired you can send a distress signal. We will immediately send you back to school. If you act smart you might be transported to the Anagla realm through invisible vacuum spaces that are around here. You will never be able to return from there. Jake's tone was serious. The kids had become quiet now. I sighed in relief and hoped that they would pay more attention now. Even though they were silly I would not want them in harm's way. I sent a message to Jake through our secret link. Jake made an eye contact with me indicating that he had understood. We decided to proceed carefully as the kids in this team were an inexperienced lot. However, it seemed as if not all had understood the gravity of this situation. An enthusiastic kid from the warrior clan of the werewolf realm said, Give us this chance your majesty. This is not a difficult job. Jake and I looked at each other. It seemed as if they would not learn a lesson before some of their peers got their fingers burnt. For this mission to be carried on smoothly, it was extremely essential that these brats realize their shortcomings. I smiled to myself. Life indeed comes full circle. More than a century ago my senior had led us on a similar expedition. We were slightly arrogant. I could still recall every word that he had spoken then. Sometimes accepting that one is weaker is more advantageous than pretending to be strong. Everyone will have flaws and make mistakes those new will definitely be at a disadvantage compared to the veteran, as the latter rely on experience. It seemed as if these kids would learn the harder way. Sure, if you insist, said Jake to the young werewolf who had warrior blood running in his veins. We will take a step back while those who share the same sentiment as this kid may come forward. I could understand the sarcasm dripping from Jake's words. However, these students seemed to be quite excited. Seven of the ten we were leading stepped out. To the remaining three I asked. 
Are you all so weak that you'd stay behind instead of following your classmates? Coincidentally, all three of them belonged to the Solar Realm. A boy from the Dragon Realm laughed and said, These three always score so high in the class. Now when this is a real battle they have decided to stay back. Cowards. One of them wanted to start a fight, but the other two held him back. Let them do as they wish to. Sir we will follow your orders. If you order us to move ahead we would and if you don't we won't. I was quite impressed by the boy's reply. They were so mature for their age. It was no wonder that the honorable deity was so strong. It seemed as if those raised in the solar realm learned to use their heads and calm their emotions from a very young age. They were just as my anodyne said. A child belonging to the solar realm is always trained to be calm from a very young age. Even before they learn to use their feet well they learn to sit still for long, doing nothing and just staring at the blank and vast spaces ahead. Their minds are calmer and as they master their thoughts they become stronger than their peers. When they join school they will be smarter and have better results than the others. These kids did not disappoint. The others still did not receive the hint and tried to barge inside the ordinary looking cave. As they did so a giant desert snake emerged from within spewing venom and roared fire such that a dust storm arose. We shielded ourselves and once the storm settled the kids had become unconscious. The snake had also disappeared. The cave, once more returned to its original state of calm. Jake looked at those three and said, Take them away and do not return. The magic here is too dark and complicated. You will be a liability rather than an asset here. Yes, your highness. They disappeared with the bodies of the kids. After many years of separation we were back again. Jake and I. Just the two of like days which seemed to be a story from the past. When no mission led by us together would ever meet failure. We disguised ourselves with charms to avoid detection. Yet we were repelled by a powerful force. Something seemed to have stopped us from entering. As we stepped back figures and smoke started materializing. This is bad, said Jake. What shall we do now? These figures cannot be destroyed. Remember the words said by ancient fairy. For that which is smoke may enter and leave at will. Will not be harmed by any known measures. A sword will fail and so will magic and yet the brightest and the coldest might together destroy them. I clearly remembered what my senior had said nearly a century ago. The Anadler King was at his prime then and he had bound all of us in a smoke cage. My senior was the only exception. As a dragon I had a very powerful source of fire but, I alone may not be able to sustain it. What I needed were a vampire's blood to help me. The ice fire which would then erupt could destroy these smoke figures. However, I could not get myself to ask Jake. It was after all a dangerous piece of magic. The first thing which we all have to do now is to surround ourselves with a shield charm such that they might not temporarily attack us. Jake and I started chanting to create a protective briar around us. It was good that the final term students, who were aspiring warriors had left. Being here would have only endangered their lives. As far as the two of us were concerned, we had survived many storms together. I was sure that when this storm ended both of us would be alive and well. Love was all he needed. Emily. I wonder why everyone is so determined to disturb the peace in my life, said Alan. He took a deep breath trying to convey his reluctance. Emily, I have really worked very hard for many centuries. Retiring was a conscious decision. I do not have any reason to reconsider it. I have left the supernatural dimension for good and hope to live my remaining life peacefully here. Each one of us, wish to live peacefully but, many times we do not enjoy this luxury. Simply because you desire so, does not mean that you will get it. In fact your inactivity might endanger the peace which you are enjoying today. Even though Alan had conveyed indirectly that, he was unwilling to fight my case I was not in a hurry to admit defeat. I still had more than 24 hours to persuade him and I would fight till the last moment. Alan perhaps sensed my determination as he looked into my eyes. 
my instincts told me that he liked a good fight and this time I was not the one to back down. Our mini stair match would have continued had we not been interrupted by his wife, Mia. Now, you cannot bully a young girl like her, said she as she handed me a cup of hot chocolate. Thanks Mia. You don't need to thank me for anything Emily. You are so adorable. I can never say no to you. If my husband troubles you over any matter feel free to complain about him to me. I suppressed my laughter with great difficulty. Mia, you cannot speak about your dear husband in this manner, said Alan dramatically. My husband is quite old. I think he is suffering from a mild case of forgetfulness which is a natural part of aging. As such, it is essential to remind him that I am the boss of this house. Alan looked at me and said, You shouldn't have paid a visit Emily. Now you have robbed me of my wife. I was sure that, at this moment Alan was quite annoyed by my presence. If he could he would have definitely cursed me at this moment. Alan's exaggerated expressions failed to impress Mia who said, Stop sulking dear. How can you think about competing with a child? You see you have been idle for too long. It would be quite nice if you could go and cook something for the two of us. Alan left muttering something which sounded like, corrupting my innocent wife's mind. Mia seemed to have heard this as she said, Did you say something darling? No sweetheart, replied Alan. Their exchange was quite sweet and brought a smile to my face. Their playful exchange made me realize how precious true love was. Alan belonged to the supernatural dimension. He could have chosen to remain young and lead a comfortable life amongst others of his kind. Yet, for the sake of his mortal lover, he decided to allow time to show its traces on his physical self. Today he low. Okayed like an ordinary 60-year-old man. If I was not wrong, his wife Mia was a couple of years younger than him. You know Emily, said Mia after Alan left. I am very lucky to have him in my life. I smiled as I could feel the sincerity behind her words. I have been the center of his universe ever since we met each other. Before I met him I never expected that someday I would be deeply loved and cherished by someone. His arrival changed my destiny and brought me back from the brink of despair. I was the classic case of broken beyond repair and if I did not meet him, I would have given up on life itself. Mia's words surprised me. Even when I had met her, while I was at the orphanage, she looked very happy. Today after witnessing her exchange with her husband, one of the most powerful beings in the magical world I was sure at how blessed she was. But, I had judged hastily. From Mia's words now, it seemed as if she had a dark past which lay deeply buried beneath the happy image of hers. As Mia continued, I got up from my seat and sat down next to her on the couch. I was previously married to a mortal like myself. We used to work at the same store and that is where we fell in love. The first few months, post-marriage, were fine but when the store closed, our relationship gradually deteriorated. Mia paused briefly and I too held my breath. She was undoubtedly reliving a tragic part of her life once more. While I found a new job as a nanny a few days later my husband, fell in the wrong company. Initially he'd return late. He'd be drunk and would simply lie down on bed to sleep. At that point he still had some sanity. He realized that, he was relying on me for his expenses. However, gradually things changed. He became a drug peddler and a gambler. The situation worsened when he started inviting his friends over. Our house was now a place where men gathered to gamble. When I objected I was beaten up badly. One night things got out of hand. My husband having lost his money gambled me. He lost again and I could only crawl for the next few days after that night. Five men had gained immense pleasure and my husband's social value shot up amongst them. I could visualize every word that Mia narrated. I wanted her to stop but refrained from doing so. I knew that Alan must have also heard every word. It seemed as if she had never spoken about this incident before. The abuse continued after that. Perhaps I should have stopped it but, I was drugged and too helpless to retaliate. One particular night, I got the chance to escape. 
my husband and his friends had gone to fix a deal. I had fever and I chose that moment to gather everything I had and make an attempt to escape. I had overestimated my abilities as I fell unconscious after walking for a short distance. Mia took a deep breath and continued. I have no idea what happened after that. When I woke up I was in a hospital. An old couple, who were doctors had brought me there and were taking care of me. After I recovered I came to know that I had lost my baby. It was a girl. That night was the one when I wished to die. My mother had passed away when I was young. My father remarried and my stepmother considered me a jinx. My husband sold me off to his friends for money. And now, even my child had left me. Perhaps it did not want me as her mother. I could not overstay the couple's kindness and left shortly afterwards. I wanted to commit suicide but, before I could jump into the roaring river, my husband, my mate Alan found me and rescued me. You know Emily, as the most powerful in the dragon realm, a male who was already married to the most perfect woman he did not need to acknowledge me. However, when he found me he left all that to stay as an ordinary mortal as I would have felt uncomfortable in his world. He accepted me despite my flaws and life with him has been the fairy tale. I, as a girl once dreamt of having. I looked at Mia whose content expression revealed, how despite her troubles she was grateful for her blessings. I realized that the ruthless and cold lawyer who could shake up the supernatural dimension was, in reality a very soft being at heart. A dragon who gave up power for the sake of his love as mate. You know Emily I will never feel the pull of a mate bond as a moral being. It is Alan who has done all the work. With him by my side I realized that. The right man will always value you and care for you. No matter how tough the going gets he will never desert you. He has put up with my anger and tolerated my tantrums. He waited patiently and gave me time. I don't know much of how things work. But, if you ever have a mate, then you should count yourself as a lucky woman Emily. Never leave him as he will always love you unconditionally. Mia stopped speaking and I had a lot to think over. Was the universe trying to give me a message? Was it telling me that I should not give up on mate from the dragon realm? Mia had fallen asleep after this chat. Alan had not returned. I was all alone at this moment with her last lines. I have only love and nothing else to share with Alan now. I cannot even give birth to a child. But then, he told me that love was all he needed for the remaining life. Pulling the Strings Emily very few people on this planet would ever be fortunate to be truly loved. Most of the relationship, s, are usually those of convenience. Mia had faced her fair share of trials in life. As such, being destined to be the legendary lawyer's mate was heaven's way of compensating her. I could understand exactly why she did not wish to remain in the supernatural dimension. It was a place where only the powerful survived. Being a powerful dragon's mate would make her an object of envy and an easy target as she was immortal. Despite beginning to learn magic at school and enjoying Fay and Ware's friendship I had to face scorn of those who felt I was beneath them. Unwittingly I had invited Lynn's jealousy for being the highest scorer in the test of fire. So I understood the reason behind Mia's reluctance. Alan, being her mate would have naturally sensed her distress and as such made a wise decision. Mia and I were lost in our thoughts when this conversation ended. However, alarm bells rang in my head as I sensed disturbances in her energy field. I was about to call out to Alan for help but, he arrived before I could. Alan raised his hands muttering something and green light emerged from his fingers, surrounding Mia who fell asleep shortly after. Post that he used a fluttering charm to transport Mia to her room walking alongside her as she floated in air on a bed of flower petals. He used the Samna spell to put her to sleep, I asked when he returned. Yes I did. You are a quick learner. I'm not. My friend who is from the fairies realm is an expert at casting it. Twice before. She has used it on a werewolf friend of ours who dozed off in class and was punished with a detention later. Not bad. I like the girl's spirit. She is a promising talent. You condone her act. Of course. 
you young people are more serious about things than we were in your days. I am happy that there is at least one person who retains her liveliness. But, how do you know that it is a female fairy and not a male one? The female fairies are more mischievous and daring than their male counterparts. The way you spoke about her was a giveaway. You are an open book. Your expressions are revealing. Alan was not the first person who had made this remark about me. The two of us sat down post this conversation across each other. With nothing more to talk about now we became quiet. The silence in the room and our previous conversation did nothing to ease the awkward feeling that Mia's revelation had created. While Alan did not mention anything, I felt as if, I had, barged an unwelcome into something very private. I wanted to stall for time but the end of our previous conversation was like the traffic signal's red light. Once the green signal appeared, I was sure Alan would raise the matter. It was better for me to take the initiative to talk about this matter. I cleared my throat. Alan who was reading a newspaper belonging to the mortal dimension did not put it down. This was getting more difficult. Alan I. You've taken quite long to speak. I'm really sorry about. Sorry about what Emily? Talking to Alan was difficult once again. I inhaled deeply as I needed to calm myself down. Mia has suffered a lot. Most of us do. The disadvantaged have it harder than those who are relatively more privileged. Mia has faced a lot in life. But, she is with me now. She will be happy for the rest of her life. Are you sure? Why do you think otherwise? Weren't you a dragon in the supernatural dimension? Yes I was. You met Mia a few decades ago but, you did get married to someone before that. How do you know about this? When I was searching for a lawyer an old newspaper spoke about how the legendary lawyer enjoys spending time at home with his wife when he is not fighting a case. He is a devoted husband, it said. You are meticulous. What about that? I guess your wife is still alive. She is a female dragon of noble lineage. She is not lacking anything. Except you. We never loved each other. Our marriage was a practical choice. But, it means that Mia will never gain the respect she deserves as your wife. Mia does not care about this. True but, your first wife might not be fond of her. She accepted this arrangement. She can enjoy the riches and I can live as an ordinary mortal in the mortal dimension with Mia. You are missing something very fundamental here. Do you think that Mia is really just an ordinary mortal? What do you mean Emily? Energy field reading. I stayed in the vampire realm for some time after I returned to the supernatural dimension. I could already sense the energy that each being in the mortal world was surrounded with. In the vampire realm, the king taught me the subtle aspects. You who are already quite powerful might have never found the time to appreciate something as fine as this field is. I am still learning but, it has helped me save myself from a troublesome classmate. I am sure that Mia is at least a part supernatural. When she was speaking to me before, there were disturbances in her energy field which only a magical being can have. You cannot sense it as you have never studied this subject matter before. If I am right, her mother who passed away must have been a supernatural. Are you sure Emily? Even if you think logically an ordinary mortal could never be your mate, water dominates a mortal's fundamental structure while as a dragon fire is the predominant element within you. The two of you would never be mates as you might harm each other. If you try and connect things I am afraid that you might discover that Mia is at least a part supernatural. I never thought about this aspect before Emily. This means that someone else is pulling the strings behind the scenes. The peace that you have now is not a consequence of your choice. Something larger is at play here. Alan got up and walked to the window. As he waved at it the scene outside the streets disappeared. The clouds had covered the sun. A heptagon rearranged itself to form seven smoke rings. Alan waved his hand again. 
the street outside was visible once more. Alan waved his hand again. His pet parrot flew out of the cage and sat on his shoulder. Alan spoke something to the bird in a foreign language. The bird flew away. He did not explain about the parrot. However, after some time he said, the Anagler King has become active once more. You might be right about someone else pulling the strings. A beautiful reunion. Emily. When Mia woke up and joined us in the evening she noticed that the parrot was missing. Where did Green go Alan? asked Mia. I just allowed him to fly out for some time. Maybe he will manage to return with a hen. He is old enough to marry and have his own family. You did the right thing dear. I am glad that you thought of sending him out. Alan's reply startled me but I collected myself quickly. In all probability he had his own reasons of hiding the truth from Mia. As the two continued with their sweet exchanges I stepped out of their house. There was a public park a short distance away. I decided to spend some time there. Upon entering, I saw my pet phoenix in the park and I knew that. It was looking out for me. The bird had always been by my side. When I lived at the orphanage I thought that. It was an ordinary bird. Later when I returned to the supernatural dimension I found out that it was the only one of its kind. It had accompanied my grandmother and my mother during their youth. When my mother passed away it followed me to the mortal dimension. This bird was my guardian angel. The phoenix had always made me smile. Jake had once said, the bird really likes you. So, both the dragon prince and I have been at the receiving end of this bird's anger. No one in our world dares to mess with the phoenix. You are the only one who can feed it leftovers. You know Jake, the bird knows how to differentiate between a genuine and an insincere person. At that point of time I felt as if the phoenix had looked at Jake scornfully. About an hour later I returned to Alan's place. Dinner was ready. Mia was sitting at the head of the table while Alan served her to his heart's content. Alan you should serve Emily as well. As Alan looked at me I said, No Mia. I can manage. Dinner with the two of them was a quiet affair only to be interrupted by Mia's giggles whenever Alan added more food to her plate. Her eyes lit up like a three-year-old kid's when Alan brought the chocolate brownies for dessert. I just love these, she said. Then eat as many as you wish to, replied Alan lovingly. Before Mia retired for the night she asked me to sleep in the room next to theirs. Call me if you need anything, she said before leaving. The warm shades of green on the wall complemented the blue curtains that covered the window. The bed with white sheets looked inviting. Once my head touched the pillow sleep took over me. At around midnight I fell thirsty and walked down to the kitchen. To my surprise Alan was still awake writing something. He did not look up as I poured myself some water calling out to me when I started climbing the stairs to return to the room. When do you plan to go back Emily? he asked. You have not agreed to represent me, replied Emily. It is best if you do not rely on me. If I were to return to fight for an unknown supernatural like you it would garner unwanted attention. It is better if you do not choose anyone to represent you. Those willing can be easily bribed and the ones firm on their principle are inaccessible to you at this stage. The laws do allow you to make an appeal and fight your own case. A 16-year-old in the supernatural dimension has more freedom than a mortal of the same age. I will never be a match to anyone from the Brighead is your grandmother. You are even close to the king and queen of the vampire realm. I don't think that you will face any problem with your case. Moreover, you have a sharp mind. The ones who might suffer are those who are in dark about your identity. Let them try and obstruct the proceedings. Avery alone will be their worst nightmare if provoked. Alan had sugar-coated his refusal. He had refused to help. It was unlikely that the others would overtly support me. As I came to terms with this, I wondered how he knew about my relationship with the solar deity. Alan seemed to have read his mind as he replied, Even though I am no longer actively involved in the affairs of the magical world, I am aware of that is happening there. Green is my best ally. 
there was no point to extend my stay here. I will leave tomorrow, said I before returning to the room. The next day Mia hugged me and gifted me a moon-shaped pendant. I wanted to refuse but she said, it is the last gift that my mother gave me. She died in an accident a week later. If I had a child he, she would be a parent to a girl of your age by now. Emily from the very day that we met I have considered you as my own. Take this as a gift. I don't know if we'd ever meet again. My mother told me that this pendant would always shield me from any danger. Today I pass it over to you. A supernatural being like you might be very powerful but, this is a token of my love for you. I wore the pendant without further ado and she looked quite happy. See her off, Alan. Alan came out and said, she really loves you. Even I did not know about this pendant till today. If you want then I can return it to you. It may help you to trace me as origins. No Emily. Since Mia gifted it to you keep it safely. The phoenix appeared next to us and I disappeared as soon as I touched its claw. I returned to the island a minute before the 48-hour deadline had expired. I am glad that you are back in time, said my grandmother. Your first lesson begins tonight. The serene moon in the sky seemed to be looking at me when I met my grandmother again. I was dressed in blue as per her instructions. Let's go. I followed my grandmother. We are going towards the northern side of this island which is a thickly forested region. The island is unique in that your mother is the only person apart from the two of us who has come this place. As a successor to the solar realm you two enjoy the same privilege. But, this is where the benefit ends. This island is home to seven different magical creatures. The support of each of them is very valuable. While I enjoy their loyalty you two would need the same to maintain the strength of the realm. These creatures are coveted by the many in the supernatural dimension. While they serve you if you are strong, they will leave you if you cannot prove your mettle. She stopped talking after that. The two of us walked further into the forest and after some time I could see that the foliage became thinner. We stopped near a small pit. My grandmother muttered an incantation and before I knew it I was standing on a raft. The small pit had expanded and was filled with water. I could no longer jump out as the edge of the pit was now quite far from where I was. This pit is an illusion. In reality it is a part of the sea. You will now be transported to where the native octopus lives. Win it over and you would be gaining a faithful friend. You have limited time. Do not disappoint me. After that I could no longer listen to my grandmother. After floating in the clam waters. The raft capsized the very moment it hit the turbulent waters. I was thrown out and sank deeper into the water. It was hard for me to breathe and it took me some time before I managed to successfully cast the Fasalida spell. A bubble materialized before me and as I entered it I could breathe freely once more. I now had more time to float and find the octopus. I wondered how I'd manage to win a fight against it. As I moved with the bubble my hair stood up. I felt. I was being watched over. My instinct was right as I found a giant tentacle wrapping itself around my bubble. This octopus was a magical being and my stay in this world was incomparable to how long it had been here. As a green light shot out from the tip of another tentacle my bubble developed a tear. Water started seeping into it. It would be just a matter of time before the octopus would use its beak to eat me up. Prepare for the worst I closed my eyes. This was one fight I was unequipped to fight. It was unfair to begin with. I was ready to die but a silver light burst out of the moon-shaped pendant that Mia had given me. The tentacle loosened its hold over me. The octopus and I were transported to the surface of the water where the raft transported me to the edge. As I jumped out the octopus made an attempt of bowing before me. My right upper arm was now engraved with the tattoo of a blue octopus. A voice in my head spoke, forgive me for my mistake benefactress. Welcome back. Today I pledge my loyalty to you again. I am grateful that the honorable deity helped us reunite. You can always use the tattoo to summon my powers. The octopus disappeared and I stood dazed next to the harmless looking pit for some time. 
When my grandmother returned she was shocked to see that I had won against the octopus so quickly. I was not amused. Did you expect me to die? No Emily. You might be injured but you'd not be dead. This battle was merely to let you gain an idea of how dangerous the supernatural dimension is so that you could work harder. So you never expected me to win against the octopus? No. Even I have never managed to win it over. I am simply letting it live here for the sake of an old friend of mine. But, how did you manage to win him over? I did not do anything. This pendant protected me. My grandmother stared at the moon-shaped pendant around my neck. Who gave you this pendant, Emily? I could sense the urgency in her voice. Mia, an old friend in the mortal dimension gave it to me. She was the one I had paid a visit to. My grandmother's face showed some emotion for the first time in my life. Do you know who she is? She is the sister whom I have been searching for the past fifty years. I don't get you. How can Mia be your sister? Mia's mother and your great-grandmother were sisters. She is my cousin. Ten years ago my aunt returned in an injured state to the solar realm. She told me about her existence and asked me to bring her back. However, I always seemed to have missed her. This was news. So it had not been for nothing that I always felt close to Mia. We did share blood ties. My grandmother wanted to meet Mia but I stopped her from making an abrupt appearance. Mia has been through a lot and is currently living with her dragon mate in the mortal dimension. You should take him into confidence before this meeting. My grandmother agreed and I looked forward to what would be a beautiful reunion. I dreamt a beautiful dream. As each spell was cast, the two of us could feel the disturbance in the air around us. Before the final spell could be chanted, the air stilled. Jake and I could sense someone had arrived. Before either of us could use magic to expose and neutralize the hidden threat, a familiar voice spoke. Please don't harm us. We have returned under His Holiness's instructions. The three boys belonging to the Solar Realm, whom we had sent back along with the others, had returned. How did you arrive when we had already finished casting so many spells for our protection? asked Jake. His Holiness Drew asked us to step inside a fire ring. He said that the ring would help us get through if we had not finished casting the final spell. He estimated that we might arrive on time. I saw that their faces were black. One of the boys was particularly concerned about his looks. If it were an ordinary day I might have laughed aloud as his behavior mimicked Jake's when we were at school. However, we had more pressing matters to attend to at the moment. You should all have told him that. His Holiness said to either perish or return alive with you both. An aspiring warrior cannot be cautious, said the boy named Silverhair. The two of us had nothing more to remark as His Holiness was someone none would disobey. Since the three of you have been sent by His Holiness, you may join us. However, the mission is dangerous. Their expressions were serious and we knew that they had understood when another boy said, Once we are inside the cave we'll only be left to our devices. Where, apart from our magical abilities, our willpower might also be tested in the face of extreme temptation. There might be real nymphs who'd try to lure you, there might be men who would try to provoke you, or you might have to face dangers that could make you question all that you have learnt till date. You may have been the smartest in your batch till now but, once inside, you may also bleed to death. Just remember survives. No matter what happens, even if one of us survives, we will return with the slain bodies of the other five. So it means that we will die. Not necessarily, said Jake. The cave is a mystery to all of us. It is not just an ordinary cave. No matter how many times you have been there before, it will throw a different challenge to you each time you enter it. There have been times when it has just transported the visitor to one of the forests, desert or even the mountains. If I remember correctly, one of the fairies was transported to a lion's den once. The hungry lion was unable to harm the fairy because the latter had magical powers. And, 
There have also been times when the challenge was not a huge one and all those who went inside returned with only minor injuries. What do we need to do once we have entered the cave? There is an ancient white crystal that we want. We can get it if we are transported to where the crystal is hidden. Nearly a century ago, one of the greatest anodynes had hidden it. He had used the cave's magical abilities to transport it to some unknown land. While there are many caves around, this cave, which is over 1,000 years old, is the only one which can take us to where the crystal is. Isn't this crystal the very same one that is said to possess the ability to remove all poisons and curses? Asked the boy who had silver hair. Yes. But, what is? We are unsuccessful. Then we can try after another six months only. The boys looked confused. I decided to explain further. You see as each one of us enters the cave our bodies sent will create a unique mark on its entrance. Once this happens, the cave's entrance will remind us. We will have an hour to finish our task. If we fail, we might either die, if the danger is a life-threatening one. The other alternative is, if the cave is in a benign mood today, it might just throw us out. We would be injured but at least alive to make another attempt six months later. The cave has never permitted the same person to enter more than once before the six-month period has elapsed. Till date we do not know why this has happened. You speak as if the cave is a living being which feels. Only those in the mortal world might mistake a cave or a stone for being non-living. There are so many ways to remove poison or curses today. Why do we need to find this crystal? Asked one of the boys. It is not an ordinary crystal. While many crystals will increase one's energy, this crystal does more. This crystal started forming when the earth had begun to cool down. It is believed that the crystal can help one to gain access to 1% of the magma formed within the earth's core. In general, it is useless but, when this amount of molten liquid inside the earth is channeled through the crystal's energies, in the waterfall that is found towards the east of the supernatural dimension, on a full moon night when the tides are unusually high, a magical ingredient Riva Rejuvena is formed. When Riva Rejuvena is mixed with glacial water, it will form a life-saving energy drink. It contains energy that may help the Anadler King to regain his powers, even if he lacks a concrete form. The smoke servants of the Anadler King are powerful, but the Anadler King himself is a shadow of his past today. If he gets the crystal, he might become more powerful than before. As for his physical body is concerned, I doubt whether he would retain his former self. In order to return, he would prefer a changed look. I looked at the boy named Silver Hair again. I was surprised by his knowledge. He looked familiar and I asked him, Are you by any chance linked to the Silver Clan of the Fairies' Ream? Yes, Your Highness. My mother is a fairy and the only daughter of the Patriarch of the Silver Clan. Then how do you belong to the Solar Realm? My father is from the Solar Realm. After their marriage, my mother and my father settled in the Solar Realm. Having a part fairy and a part solar on our side would put us in an advantageous position. Some spells can be performed only by a few individuals, belonging to certain clans in the supernatural dimension. I might have been a prince, I might have been hardworking, but I would never have been able to cast those exclusive spells perfectly. Since the three of you have arrived, let us complete what we have begun, said Jake. The three boys sat down quietly and Jake and I cast the final spell. The smoke figures disappeared shortly after that. Where did they go? Asked another boy from the solar realm. They can no longer detect our presence. As such, they have retreated. Are they real or just an illusion? They are real people who have lost their concrete body forms and have transformed into smoke. Meaning. Their five sense organs retain their abilities. They feel pain, hunger and thirst like the rest of us. However, since they have lost their physical bodies, they can no longer satiate these cravings. This is a terrible life. True. How are they alive then? 
the only way they can survive is by killing magical beings humans and animals alike. You see, if one of us were to die at their hands, our life's force, which remains active for at least three hours post-death, would be absorbed by them. This will allow them to live. What if they fail? They will gradually vanish. The Anagler King will become weaker. Then we can destroy all these smoking people. The Anagler King will never ever be able to become strong again. It is not simple to kill the smoke followers of the Anagler King. They traded their physical body structure to become powerful. They should not be underestimated as each one of them has a unique power. I wish there was a way for these folks to become normal again. They were once like us, Silver. However, they were unhappy. Since they wanted to become more powerful, they sold themselves to the Anagler King. Today they are reduced to smoke. Did they not know that they were choosing the wrong thing? It takes a century to lose your physical body form. You will realize what you lost only when it is too late. Moreover, some of them fail to acknowledge their losses. In their minds they remain powerful till the end of their lives. Can nothing be done then? I am afraid no. Sir, has the Anagler King returned? We would not be chatting so peacefully if he had. I hope he never does. We all hope for the same. Peaceful days are hard to come by. But since his smoker followers have returned, I am afraid he too may return. But your highness. Silver, Stellar and Stellari, the three of you will be a part of the elite warrior troop of the supernatural dimension in the future. What I wish to say is that you must work harder. The Anagler King was only temporarily subdued. He is too strong to be finished in one go. However, with courage and determination, we may unravel mysteries that will help us in our fight against him. If he remains hidden for long, many of his smoke followers, who are scattered all over, may lose hope. He might lose his chance to reign over the supernatural dimension forever. My family has always been willing to make the supreme sacrifice for the safety of all. Being their child, I will follow in their footsteps, said Silver. The twins, Stellar and Stellari, said, we belong to the solar realm. There is no way we shall allow the return of the Anaglers. Our ancestors, as well as our queen, have been fighting very hard against these dark forces. I smiled at how reverentially they spoke of the honorable deity. A realm where the subjects are taken care of will never have to worry about its future. Such was the solar realm and perhaps the anodyne as well, that the people there always stood up for each other. Class differences did exist, but, by large, the society was egalitarian in nature. Merit was enough to allow anyone to climb the ranks in these realms. This was something which was missing in the dragon realm. I wondered what had gone wrong with the dragon realm, that the conditions were worsening each day. The five of us sat in a circle where Jake and I finished the last spell, which provided each of us with a protective shield. The part fairy boy, Silver, made use of a protective fairy charm exclusive to the Silver Clan to enhance the protection that we had. Stellar and Stellari, the twins, used a piece of magic taught to them by the solar deity. It produced a shield that could protect us from a snowstorm. I did not want the Anagler King to regain his strength. If he did, Emily might be kidnapped by him. He could even succeed at erasing her memory and making her a part of the Anagler realm. She is not very strong right now. We had to keep her safe for the next three years at least. I looked around once again. We were ready to enter the cave now. Since it was night, it was best to rest and enter when the first rays of the sun began to illuminate the earth. The dangers during the day were lesser than those during the night. I closed my eyes after ensuring that nothing would disturb us in the night. I rarely had any dreams whenever I slept. Tonight was different. As we slept, I dreamt a beautiful dream one which had my mate Emily with me and our kids in the dragon realm. Don't force me. Vern. Fire might have been the dominant element within me. As a dragon I could withstand very high temperatures. However, 
When the five of us entered the cave I realized that my heat tolerance threshold had been breached. Our shields melted. Jake and I could survive for a some time due to the missions inside the volcano which we had undertaken decades ago. The boys from the solar realm were gifted in this aspect, but even they would be unable to last for an hour inside the cave. We were trapped and unable to escape. Our magical abilities were limited inside this cave. Feathers, burning brightly tried to blind our vision as they floated towards us. On any day they could burn a person to death. Stellar invoked decello ice magic which deflected the feathers but our luck seemed to have run out. The fire demon rushed to our direction playing the song of enslavement. We closed all our ears with our fingers to protect ourselves from the music as this was something magical abilities could not save us from. We breathed a sigh of relief as it passed by and its attempt to enslave us failed. In ancient times the magical beings of different realms, haughty that they were, insulted a fire angel from heaven. Folklore said that the angel destroyed itself and vowed to return and make all magical beings its slave. The angel's wish was fulfilled as it was reborn as the fire demon with a flute. Whenever it played the song of enslavement any magical being who heard the music would be trapped as a slave forever. No one knew where those slaves were and what happened to those magical beings. All that we knew was it was nature's way to mock at the most powerful in the supernatural dimension. My senior, the all-powerful Anodyne Azarius, was the only one who remained unaffected as he belonged to a very powerful moral clan which was not purely supernatural. As these two obstacles were defeated we continued moving forward. While the entrance was small the cave was large. We had to reach the center of the cave and try our luck at the door of perpetuity. If we were fortunate we might be transported to the place where the crystal was. My line of thought was broken as Jake swore loudly. I saw that a wall of red sand dust had sprung up from nowhere and stood before us. I looked at the others and all of us knew that it would be impossible to move forward now. If any one of us moved ahead the wall would capture us and transport us to one of the deserts on the planet. Without any water we would die. We stopped in our tracks but the wall kept on moving forward. The temperature inside the cave is soaring. We might be unable to survive for long, said Silver Hair. When someone from the solar realm spoke this it meant that it was indeed a serious issue. Dragons might have fire as a dominant element but, it was those from the solar realm who could withstand the most heat. Jake a vampire might be able to flourish in the coldest climates but would be unable to survive for long out here. I looked towards the direction of the guy who had once been my best friend. Jake was perspiring profusely. If this continued, he would undoubtedly faint as his body would have lost the water content. The heat within this cave surpassed the temperatures that could be endured by the dragon or the solar realm's members. All hopes of finding the crystal were destroyed. I wondered whether we would even remain alive today. Stellar and Stellari, however, cast the solar realm's heat enchantment around Jake. This enchantment could temporarily protect Jake. The color of his face started returning. We now had the time to squeeze ourselves into the only crevice inside this cave from where water would sometimes gush out. Jake cast the Atenuo spell which decreased our body sizes to fit inside the crevice. As the five of us squeezed ourselves into the narrow opening silver hair insisted that he enter last. I am the only one who can use the fairies and the solar realm shield to protect us. This was our only hope now. This shield consumed a person's life force. The boy did everything within his ability to protect all of us. I might have been a prince but today I realized my limitations. I realized why his holiness and my senior always insisted that a good team and not a powerful leader would help one to win. Our problem was not solved and just when I felt that all five of us might die today, the cave threw us out. With great difficulty I managed to catch hold of Jake and Silver Hair with the twins help. We chanted Evanescent and disappeared. Our destination was the hospital wing of the school. Emily. I don't think that I had previously received any more injuries. During the solutions lesson, a werewolf dropped blistering liquid on my skin causing immense pain and pustules to erupt on my hand. As if that was not enough the sword lady was harsh on the whole class in general. 
My injuries did not let me get away as she remarked. Do you know the difference between a good and a poor warrior, Emily? The former will fight as long as a drop of blood remains within them. The latter runs away and will live the life of a coward. Though he might live for long, he will always fear the brave and make too many compromises. Go and attend the lesson or you may leave and never return. I did not have a choice. Subsequently when I reached the hospital wing the doctor was too stunned to speak. My blisters were now infected and the injuries on my wrist meant that I'd be unable to write for a week. Why did you continue fighting? Your nerves are damaged and this will take time to cure, said the doctor. The doctor and the sword lady argued while I kept quiet as I did not wish to take any sides. This commotion did not seem to end when five people materialized inside the hospital from thin hair. The two of them immediately left my side and I saw that my mate the Prince of the Dragon Realm was carrying an injured Jake and my school senior named Silverhair. His holiness soon entered and the blinds were drawn. I could see nothing except flames of blue coming out of his fingertips and forming concentric circles. I kept mum while a nurse attended my injuries. Brig hid. I had received news of Silver Hare's injury, but I stopped briefly when I saw that Emily too was receiving first aid. On a personal level I was glad that she worked hard, but, as a solar deity I felt that she was still very weak. As someone who would be inheriting the solar realm one day she had to become stronger. I walked on and was about to enter the doctor's chamber when the dragon prince boy Vern King came out with his mentor His Holiness. How are they? I asked. Both of them are better now. You should thank Vern King. He brought those two back in time. Thank you, I said. I was not very fond of Vern King and wanted him to leave. Perhaps he understood my unspoken sentiment and excused himself. However, when he walked past Emily I saw how he looked at her. The look held a sense of longing and care which only a lover could have for his beloved. I was sure that I would never want my grandchild to mix with Vern King. I had never liked it when my son-in-law was partial towards him. The boy's mother while many might not believe was not what she seemed to be. I lacked the evidence to report her but I surely believed that she was colluding with the Anagler King. My protective instincts kicked in and I could not stop myself from saying, Emily you may leave. I am sure that your classes are still going on. You can catch up on the remaining lessons. Emily looked at me startled and so did the prestigious prince and his revered teacher. Stellar and Stellari from the solar realm stopped dead in their tracks. They too had been about to leave but stopped when I spoke to Emily. I looked towards them and said, Both of you can take her along with you. She belongs to your realm and was orphaned when young. Look after her as your younger sister. The twin boys who looked at Emily were also orphans. While they always had each other with them I knew that they had desired a family for a long time. As I smiled they took Emily along. The two of them could not hide their happiness. While I could not provide them with much for the sacrifices their parents had made for the realm, I hoped that Emily as a younger sister and their junior would bring them joy. They had asked their mom for a sister when they were younger. Just don't leak it out. We understand honorable deity. We will keep it a secret. The two left and the prince lashed out, you shouldn't have asked her to leave. You do not have the right to interfere in the matters of the solar realm. I am grateful for what you have done. You'd be honored before all the realms but, you cannot dictate and tell me how, I must speak to my subjects. You are so rude. No his holiness let me complete. You think that the world will bow down before you for you are so powerful. You are basically trying to buy respect. This will never happen. We kept quiet when you destroyed the dragon realm. Do you even think that someone would be interested in your grandchild? You punished many innocent people for the sake of my half-uncle's mistakes. I could see that Vern King had been bearing this grudge against me for a very long time. He continued aggressively. No one would ever be interested in a girl who has you as a relative. She would be as rude and as unbearable as you are. Vern you are crossing your limits. No I am not his holiness. 
being a solar deity more powerful than those from other realms does not give her the right to speak to her subjects like this. Moreover honorable deity, in case of Emily's matters I will always interfere. Firstly, she is my senior's daughter. That relationship is enough for me to ensure her well-being in the supernatural dimension. Furthermore, there is one more thing that I must share with you. Emily is my mate. Emily is very young today. I have already waited to find her for a very long time. Now that I have finally found her I will wait for her to grow up. She has been mine since birth and if you try to interfere I would never be kind. A dragon cares for one being that is his mate. If the required I can kill to keep her safe and can also lay down my own life for the same. Says the man whose father gave up his mate for the sake of safeguarding his position as a king. I could not miss the sarcasm in her voice. Says the man whose grandfather left the realm, the magical dimension and its luxuries for being with his mate. You can say whatever you wish to. I will never let her be with you. Emily will never listen to you. She will drag in boy. Just now you said that my granddaughter was unappealing. Let me tell you that Emily is my grandchild and I will never let this union happen. I could see how stunned Vern King was when he heard the truth. Vern. This was totally unexpected. My anger and my emotions had made things difficult. I understood how angry Honorable Deity was as she continued. Your teacher knows about this matter. And that is exactly why I destroyed your uncle. I will never let my own grandchild live in a realm where she would always be surrounded by dangers. Your mother is not a great woman either. I am not apologetic because you two crossed the line when you made things personal. Vern King you have been living in a fairy tale world fantasizing about being with Emily. This will never happen and I, Brighead swear that I will make sure that Emily leaves you. You are suitable for those dragon girls but not for her. It is best if you do not meet her in the future ever again. I will forgive your outburst today as you might be tired after a dangerous mission. It is better if you leave now. My mind was in a mess and I left after His Holiness's signal. Brig hid. Once the Dragon Prince left, His Holiness and I were left behind. You should not consider only one perspective Brig hid. Vern really loves Emily. I did not wait for him to finish and interrupted, so will many other magical beings when she has grown up. It can be anyone but him. Emily is Vern's mate Brighead. And she is not bound by the mate law. She may not end up choosing the dragon boy. I think that even she feels for him. Her father was the only man who could change into a dragon. You know in the future Emily might have inherited Azarius' gift as well. If she too can acquire a dragon's form. It will add to the solar realm's strength. Emily will never have anything to do with Vern King. You are blocking two people who love each other. Love has never done much for us. It always gave us pain Aegeus. As Emily's grandmother. Brighead don't force me to step in and assert my authority. That power was lost when. As your husband and the Emily's grandfather I will. You renounced your rights as either the day you decided to fight for the welfare of all. You have nothing to do with the matters of the solar realm. I don't. But, I have not given up on our relationship. I did feel the pain when our daughter died. Have you ever bothered to visit their grave? No Aegeus you have not. It is always the bigger picture that someone like you cared about. You and your idealistic vision of how the world should be. I have made many mistakes and I do tend to atone for them. Emily is not the guinea pig I'd ever let you experiment on. We loved each other Aegeus we still do but look at the pain that it landed us in. We are still together and yet. The reason why we drifted away was because you were very rigid Brighead. I will never let this cloud Emily. Don't force me as you know it would never be great.